Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Today's video is my TBR for April and there's quite a lot of possibilities here. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name's Alice and I have way too many books. And I'm starting to feel, having just looked at this TBR, that I may not be reading that many that belong to me, which is a bad sign. But anyway, I have lots of plans to talk about for April. I'm going to start off with some buddy reads because those are the books that I will definitely, definitely be reading in April. And then, of course, <laughs> there are some readathons. There are three readathons that I'm really interested in participating in in April, and for all three of those, I have some possibilities. So let's get straight in to the books that I definitely plan to read. So, starting on the buddy reads. First of all, <laughs> I have got a buddy read planned with the lovely Sandy from Ms. Reads A Lot and Gemma from Gemma Books. And we've been planning this buddy read for quite some time. It, it's crime and punishment. So this has been sat on my shelf for upwards of 10 years. And it's actually not as massive as I thought, but it is pretty small print. <laughs> so 550 pages. Um, crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. This will be my I was thinking it's going to be my first ever Russian classic, but I did read One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich uh, recently, so uh, I guess it's my second, but it is my first Dostoevsky, and yeah, I don't really know what to expect, but I've been told a lot of positive things by a lot of people, and safety in numbers, so I'm going into this with Sandy and with Gemma. So we're planning to read this straight away as soon as April starts. So that is one that I feel fairly confident I will read in the month of April. And secondly, I have got a buddy read planned with the lovely Janelle from Too Fond of Books. And we're going to read another book I've had on my shelf for upwards of 10 years, which is Bulldog Drummond by Sapper. Now you may recognise this book, particularly if you've been around a while. This has been on two TBRs, and one of the TBRs it was on was my very first TBR for the 1900 to 1950 readathon and that was my very first video two years ago nearly and I still haven't read Bulldog Drummond. This is set just after the First World War and is about a character called Bulldog Drummond and I don't need to know too much more than that but I'm glad that I've got a reading buddy to read it with me because this was on one of my lists of 23 books I want to read in 2023 so definitely glad that I'm going to get to this with Janelle. Thirdly, for buddy reads, and finally, we have a buddy read with Berna from Berna's Bookish Adventures. And Berna and I luckily are reading, I believe it's a short story or a very short book, and it's contained in my Oscar Wilde collected works, and that is The Canterville Ghost. And The Canterville Ghost, I think I meant to get to last year, maybe in shorty September, maybe in Victober, and I didn't. Yeah, really, really glad to be buddy reading it with Berna. We usually have pretty similar tastes um, when buddy reading, so uh, hopefully this will be another good one. It's a group read. I also am continuing with the Aurora Tea Garden series. This is for a read-along being hosted by the lovely Ange from Ange's Book Chatter and Amy from Booktube with Amy and it's called the Into the Library read-along. The book for that is The Julius House which is the fourth in the Aurora Tea Garden series and it will be the last one that I'm rereading because from book five onwards they will be new to me. I haven't actually got the book in my hand because I've shown it to you three times already. It's um, in an omnibus edition and I'm feeling a bit unsure about this one because I really didn't like book three on the reread um, but it can only be better so let's hope for that. This is a series uh, of cosy mysteries about a character called Aurora Tea Garden, and hopefully she's going to be a bit more sensible in this book than she was in the last one. So of course the other major thing I am continuing is the Women's Prize Plod Along which I'm hosting with Gemma from Gemma Books and Charlie from Charlie Brook Reads 
and we are continuing to host plods. Um, there should be at least one coming up every week. I currently have three women's prize books on the go, one on audio which will definitely not be finished by April, so that is Stoneblind by Natalie Haynes, so I'll definitely be reading that in April. The other two are physical and I hope to finish them by April, that's Pod by Laylene Paul and Children of Paradise by Camilla Gradova, so they will probably be out of the way by April or very early in April. And the next two that are available for me to collect from my library are The Bandit Queens by Perini Shroff. And this one I'm really, really looking forward to, especially after seeing Gemma's review of it. I think that is one that I'm going to really, really like. I also have Cursed Bread by Sophie McIntosh to pick up and I'm hoping I enjoy that more than Charlie did. Those will be the next two physical ones and the next audio after Natalie Haynes will probably be Wandering Souls by Cecile Pinn. I am getting on okay with the Women's Prize long list. Whether I will have finished it by the 26th of April I think is highly unlikely um, because I think I've read five and so even with the three that I'm currently reading, I will only be halfway through. We will see. But obviously that is another major thing, continu continuing into April. And that is one that I'm reading exclusively on audio or from the libraries. Let's get on to three <laughs> readathons. I don't know why I keep getting hooked in to three readathons per month, but I do. So the first one I want to talk about is Trans Girl April, which is being hosted by the lovely Kevy over at Say Kevy and the lovely Willow from Books and Bow. The idea of this is to read books by trans and non-binary authors. There's been so many great recommendations for this. I will link Kevy and Willow's videos and also I might even link some videos by others that I've watched who've got giant piles of possibilities because there's so much choice out there and I knew that I would not have time to read as many as I would like to so there are definitely videos that I'm saving for later to keep looking out for the books that people have mentioned. I feel like I've picked three books that are um, offering something different to each other so hopefully I will get a good range and then can carry on reading more of the books that I've had recommended to me after April when hopefully I will have a bit more free time. So the first book I picked up from the library is Welcome to St Hell, My Trans Teen Misadventure by Lewis Hancocks. I think I first saw this in the Goodreads Choice Awards and I think it's also been up or is up currently for a Waterstones Award. Um, I believe this is a graphic memoir by Lewis Hancocks and all about his time in high school. So yeah, really, really looking forward to reading this about his experiences. And I think the illustration style is really interesting. And I look forward to this one. I've heard really, really good things. And I really enjoy reading graphic memoirs. The second one I've got is an ebook, which is Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. This one I first heard about on Kevy's channel when Kevy reviewed it. And I know that quite a few people who's April TBRs I've already watched are also reading this. In the description of this on Libby where I've borrowed it from it says good omens meets the long way to a small angry planet. You'll know that I've recently bought the long way to a small angry planet. I think this is a book about someone who makes a deal with the devil. I think it goes from there. It sounds really really intriguing. Kevy rated it quite highly I believe so looking forward to that one. And the third book I actually came across when it was announced on the Jalak Prize long list. And this is None of the Above by Travis Alabanza. And I believe this one is all about Travis's experiences as non-binary. It sounds really, really harrowing, but definitely something that I feel like I need to learn more about. And I think that this book is a series of essays. I've got this one from Borrowbox on audio, so that will be one of my next listens. And I really, really hope to get to that one as well. So I'm hoping I've made that manageable that I should be able to get to all three of those. I really, really hope I can because I've heard great things about all three. The next readathon that I also really, really want to read for and hopefully won't take up too much space on the TBR is the Picture This read along, which is back for a second year. This one is hosted by Jack from Spread Book Joy and Shelley from Shelley Sparingen. They are hosting this readathon to 
uh, get us to read pitch books. And I'm not going to dwell too long. Oh, I've just found another book I was supposed to talk about. I'm not going to dwell too long on some of these picture books because I actually showed them for my TBR last year and didn't get round to them because I showed so many things. So I really do want to reread The Wolves in the Walls by um, Neil Gaiman and illustrated by Dave McKean. This is an absolutely brilliant picture book that I came across when I was training to be a teacher. I definitely want to reread that. I haven't read it for years. And when I went to the library, I'm looking for a different pitch book author. I also found that uh, Neil Gaiman and Dave McKean had created another book together called Mirror Mask. So I don't know anything about Mirror Mask, but I thought that that would be a good one to also get out. And this is about um, Helena, who's about to embark on a most amazing journey. She's been raised in a family of circus performers and always dreamed of living a more ordinary life. But when she's drawn into a strange and magical realm, one where anything can happen, her real life is stolen by a runaway from the other side. Despite the fact I have lots of picture books in my home, some of which I haven't read, I also picked up A Child of Books by Oliver Jeffers and Sam Wilson. And I don't know much about this, but I believe it's about a little girl and reading. So of course I wanted to get that out. Really, really interesting cover. I'm sure I will talk about these in more depth later in the month, but the other books that I have left over from last year's TBR, um, and these are books that other people have read while I've been around in, uh, when I was teaching preschool. Um, other people read them for story times, but if you've ever worked with children, you'll know that if you're not reading the story, you're extremely busy at story times. So yeah, I haven't actually fully read these myself. So I have two books by Julia Donaldson, that is Tabby McTatt, um, illustrated by Axel Scheffler. And of course, also illustrated by Axel Scheffler and written by Julia Donaldson, I have Charlie Cook's favourite book. I think these are both Julia Donaldson's that I haven't heard all the way through, so I am going to be reading those two. I would also really like to get to uh, Space Dog by Minnie Gray. I absolutely loved Toys in Space by Minnie Gray and she is a fantastic illustrator. These are beautiful, beautiful books. I think she's also written one called Traction Man and one called The Adventures of the Dish and the Spoon. Yeah, I haven't actually read this, although I bought it when I was doing a space topic at school. And yeah, it's got a tagline, in space no one can hear you bark. So really, really looking forward to this one by Minnie Gray. And I also have two by Lauren Child, who's been a favourite of mine for her Charlie and Lola books for a while. And these are both in the same series. We have Beware of the Storybook Wolves. And I think this is the follow-up, Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Book? So these are both fairy tale influenced and I can't wait to get to those as well. So that was a quick whistle stop of my possibilities for Picture This. I definitely will be talking about Picture This further in another video. Jack and Shelley have challenged us this year to make a, an illustrator spotlight video. And despite having so many books in my house, I could easily make it on many, many illustrators. I, of course, have decided that I want to make it about an illustrator whose books I do not own. So I have been to the library, I haven't found what I wanted, so watch this space. But I, I would really, really love to read more books, even if I can't make the video. I'd really, really love to read more books by or illustrated by John Classen, who wrote a hilarious series called The Hat Trilogy. So highly, highly recommend that if you're looking for something for Picture This. Do go and check out Jack and Shelley's announcement videos and they have lots of playlists of last year's Picture This content as well. So do check those out. They'll be in the description down below. The final readathon that I want to participate in in April is called People April. This is a brand new readathon hosted by Roz from Scally Dandling About the Books and Elizabeth from Bookhounds and Books. The aim with this is to read a non-fiction about people. I have some options from my shelf. I'm not sure which one I will get to. These are three possibilities from my shelves. Had to go from my shelves for this one because I've got so many library books out. I did, I did haul more library books than that recently, but I'm not sure if I'll get to them, so I won't talk about them here. But 
I have um, Join Me by Danny Wallace. This is a book that is about Danny Wallace and about other people who he gets to come together uh, to join join a cult. Um, but it isn't really a cult, I don't think. It's, it's like a cult that he, he made up by accident. So yes, that is definitely about people, definitely about Danny Wallace, and I may pick that up because I've been meaning to get to it for a very long time. We've seen that also on a TBR before and I didn't get to it. If I'm feeling in the mood for football I have uh, Sir Bobby Charlton's second part of his autobiography. I've already read the first part which was called My Manchester United Years and this book is called My England Years and I have somehow never got to it properly. I would like to read this at some point, not sure if it will be this month. And the third one I have is a music autobiography and that is A Scar Tissue by Anthony Kiedis, famously the lead singer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, which is a band I really really love. This is actually my husband's, he's read this and it's been on my TBR for absolutely ages because I've always meant to read it. If I do get time to get to an autobiography it also might be this one. Those are the three from my shelves that I might choose from. If you would like to have a say let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of those three or would like to see me read any of those three then let me know which one so that I can pick it up. The other book on my shelf that I thought about for this, I'm not sure if it qualifies so Ros or Elizabeth if you're watching let me know, um, is Murder Isn't Easy The Forensics of Agatha Christie by Carla Valentine. So this isn't directly a biography but it is about Agatha Christie sort of. So if this counts I could also read this. Those are the books that I had for those three fabulous readathons. I will probably pick one for people April. I don't, I'm not going to set myself a limit on how many picture books I read because they are something that it's lovely to just read one at bedtime or just fit one in as and when. Hopefully I'll fit in more than I did last year. I did accidentally miss out a book that I had on my book stack and that is Women Talking by Miriam Taves and this one I really do hope to get to because I've picked this up for reading across Canada. This is a reading project hosted by Jolene from Bookworm Adventure Girl and we've reached April and I have yet to read a Canadian book so I'm so sorry about that Jolene but I really have intended to. I still have Emily St. John Mandel on my shelf to read for January and the, the part of Canada for April is Manitoba and I think this is where this book is set but I'm not too sure if it's also where Miriam Taves is from. Um, as you know one of my favourite books of last year was Fight Night by Miriam Taves and that was the first book I had read by this author and I picked this one up in a charity shop for 50p um, when I saw it and this one is an imagined response to real events and this is about a remote Mennonite colony in the 2000s where many, many women were raped by what they thought were demons or ghosts and their accounts were dismissed. So Miriam Taves notes in a note on the novel that women talking is both a reaction through fiction to these true life events and an act of female imagination. Really, really interested to get to this one and it's quite a short one. I really do hope to get to this in April and start to catch up on reading across Canada. Definitely check out Jolene's channel. She's got a lot more information and recommendations recommendations for all of the different parts of Canada that she has been reading from so far. That is my massive TBR for April. Do let me know in the comments what are you planning to read in April? Are you joining in with any of these reading events here on booktube? And if you are let me know what you plan to read for them. If you have enjoyed this video today please do give it a like, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already and that's all for my April TBR so I will hope very much to see you all again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now!